Heritastic Nation, so for Remembrance Day or Veterans Day or even Memorial Day. One of the symbols that we use to remember those who have given their lives or who have lost their lives during um, tragic events such as war um, is the poppy. It serves as a symbol so that way we may never forget. And that we we're going to be learning to draw a poppy today and we're going to do a simple ink and watercolor piece. So we're going to follow along. I'm going to show you how to draw the poppy so that way you may create art for any of your memorial um, services or galleries that you might um, put your art in or even um, at school. You can use this as an art piece in a classroom that you can display for Remembrance Day or Memorial Day um, or wherever, whatever uh, celebration you use to mark the um, time that you remember those who have given their lives. So here we go on drawing a poppy. The first step is that we're going to be drawing the center of the poppy. This first poppy is going to be quite large. It is going to be the focal piece, focal point of our art piece. And we're going to draw it, color in that center black there as well. We're going to be drawing the um, first two uh, petals off the poppy. So we're going to curve out, come in, curve out, and tuck in. And then we're going to draw two more petals on either side that tuck in. And then just one in the back. We cannot see most of that petal because it's in the back of the poppy. Add some lines down there for the vein. And then we're going to draw a curved line for the length of the stem. On the other side we curve down. Then halfway down we're going to come out and draw the stem for the leaf and then finish at the bottom. The leaf of a poppy has a razor edge so we're going to draw zigzag lines for that edge. We're going to add some details for some texture, just very thin detailed lines. Just like that. Next draw some series of razor or zigzag lines for the grass for the field that your poppy is in. Pardon me. Okay, I'm not worried about all of it, just in the areas because I'm going to leave lots of it blank. I'm going to draw a couple, two more poppies, just smaller, so that way they're in the distance. Because, of course, for me, this is sort of some uh, representing Flanders Field. So we have our poppies in our picture here. If you want to add um, a little birds in the in the for in this background, sorry, in the sky, which is the background, yeah, you can add some. If you want to make it very Flanders Fields where the poppies glow, then that is something you can always do. Just a few birds flying away in the distance. Next we're going to add our paint. So for this I'm just simply using water and watercolor paints. Watercolor paints are ideal because when they don't make a lot of mess they're very translucent so you can see all your details beneath here and you can have a lot of control over it and it's easy to clean up because once they're dry they are hard as you can see on this palette. I don't need to wash it. I simply take it, 
stick it in a drawer and it's done and clean and I can use it next time. So first I'm going to be starting off, um, I'm going to start off with the grass and the petals. Mm, yeah, just the grass first. We'll come, well here we go. We'll just go for it. I'm, I'm actually going to be very loose with my painting. I'm not going to draw all the details on this. I'm going to leave a lot of my edge of my paper white today. And so that way it looks, it's just keeping to a part of the piece. I don't want to do every detail today. We're just going to keep it very loose. This is just cardstock paper that I'm working on. This is not actually watercolor paper. Um, I use a lot of cardstock paper because it's um, accessible and you can buy a lot of it for a better buck. And uh, if you're new to art, this is a good starting point. It's thick enough that it won't you won't go through. And if you're a teacher and using this in the classroom, then uh, it works for a lot of kids and um, as a good starting paper, right? And it's a little bit more affordable and, than buying a whole pile of watercolor paper. Once people are more experienced, you it's definitely worth moving up into watercolor paper and you can notice the difference in the way that the watercolor paints react on it. Um, but for a starting point, paper, I mean, there's nothing wrong with this. And just for, for, the, for this video, it is fine. So we have our poppies in the background. I'm going to have very faded watery blue. I'm just going to do the area around the poppies and around the birds in the sky. I'm going to start off with the sky first because I want to let this paint in the stems and the um, poppy petals dry a little bit before I come back to them. And paint around it. And I'm gonna be careful. I'm not, I want to leave these birds white, so they kind of stand out. So I'm gonna be careful. I'm burning up my paintbrush to them. I'm not painting like this. When you paint or you cut in, you bring your paintbrush up to the edge, just like that, and on the other side as well. And if you're older and you begin painting your house. That is called cutting in. <laughs> and again, just leaving the edges quite loose. I mean a lot of just if you want to have a very soft edge you can do just water along your edges and it will kind of bleed it blend it out now this paint has started absorbing into the paper um, you can see where it's still wet it's bleeding into the background that is totally fine that is the beauty of watercolor paints let it happen you have to let the material or the medium do its thing sometimes it's part of the beauty I'm even going to encourage that right now just as proof. Check it out. Add some water just along those edges and it's just so beautiful. Oh, that's red. <laughs> oh dear. All right, back to this. And again, I'm really being aware of these edges, trying to leave them white.
So once you're done, um, you are going to just set your paper aside and you're going to let it dry. And you will, upon, upon this drying, you can totally have an art piece that's perfect for Remembrance Day. As well, please make sure you give yourself a little artist signature at the bottom. So everyone knows who the artist is. And if you are really into it, you can always add the year of creation. But you don't have to. All right, Artastic Nation, that is the video for today. So you have a nice Remembrance Day or Memorial Day art piece um, using a poppy as a symbol to always remember and to never forget. Please make sure that you subscribe to our uh, YouTube channel so that way you can get more tutorials and release notifications of when new art episodes have arrived. Um, as well, please like this video, give it a thumbs up. That would be very helpful for me um, and encourage me to keep, continue to create videos for you guys. Um, for more art tutorials, please head on over to my blog at MsArtArtastic.com. You can search Ms. Artastic in Google and that's a good way to find it. As well for art teachers, please head on over to TeachersPayTeachers.com and find my store full of art resources and art tutorials for your classroom um, by searching Ms. Artastic in the search bar on Teachers Pay Teachers. As well, I have a uh, teacher t-shirt apparel store now and you can find that um, link to my store online store in the comment section below the video. So please find that. Um, and all the links to, to my different thing, my different accounts, such as my Instagram, where you can follow me, my blog, my teacher apparel store, um, and my TPT store. All the links are always found in the comment section below the video. So um, please check it out. And for other um, Remembrance Day resources, I also have included a link to my re um, Remembrance Day and Memorial Day um, art teacher resources in the comment section. So for more of those, to get more of this, please head on over there. You have an artastic day.